Edmund had decided he didn't much like this place and had almost made up his mind to go home when he heard the sound of bells. The sound came nearer and nearer until at last there swept into sight a sleigh drawn by two reindeer with hair so white that even the snow hardly looked white compared with them. On the sleigh driving the reindeer sat a fat dwarf who would have been about three feet high if he'd been standing. He was dressed in polar bear's fur and on his head he wore a red hood with a long gold tassel hanging down from its point. But behind him on a much higher seat in the middle of the sleigh sat a very different person. A great lady, taller and more beautiful than any woman Edmund had ever seen. She was also covered in white fur up to her throat and held a long straight golden wand in her right hand and wore a golden crown on her head. Her face was white, not merely pale, but white like snow, except for her very red mouth. Stop! <laughs> and what, pray, are you? Uh, I, I'm, my name's Edmund. Is that how you address a queen? I, I beg your pardon, your majesty. I didn't know. Not know the Queen of Narnia? Huh? You shall know us better hereafter. But I repeat, what are you? Please, Your Majesty, I don't know what you mean. What are you? Are you a great overgrown dwarf that has cut off its beard? No, Your Majesty. I never had a beard. I'm a boy. A boy? Do you mean you are a son of Adam? Well, I... Uh, 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 oh. I see you are an idiot, whatever else you may be. Answer me once and for all, or I shall lose my patience. Are you human? Yes, Your Majesty. And how, pray, did you come to enter my dominions? Please, Your Majesty, I came in through a wardrobe. A wardrobe? What do you mean? I... I opened a door and just found myself here, Your Majesty. <sighs> a door? A door from the world of men. I have heard of such things. This may wreck all. Oh, but you are only one and easily dealt with. Your Majesty? My poor child! How cold you look! Come and sit with me here on the sleigh, and I will put my mantle round you, and we will talk. Yes, Your Majesty. Perhaps something hot to drink. Should you like that? Yes, please, Your Majesty. But where will you here. find... Here! Your drink! How did you do that? Ah, but it is boring to drink without eating. What would you like best to eat? Turkish delight, please, Your Majesty. So be it. A box of Turkish delight. A large box? I've never seen so much. You eat while I ask questions. How did you come to Narnia? As I said, through the wardrobe. Yes. Yes, but did you find this wardrobe on your own, or were you led to it? My sister Lucy came through first. Ah, you have a sister. Two sisters and a brother. Have they also been to Narnia? No, Your Majesty. Only Lucy. But you see, we didn't believe her because she said she met a fawn here and... You are sure there are just the four of you? I'm sure. I would know my brothers and sisters, wouldn't I? <laughs> Of course you would. <laughs> so, there are two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve. This Turkish delight is very good. Oh, but I've finished it all. Is there more? Son of Adam, I should so much like to see your brother and your sisters. Will you bring them to see me? I'll try. Because if you did come again, bringing them with you, of course, 
I'd be able to give you some more Turkish delight. I can't do it now. The magic will only work once. In my own house, it would be another matter. Why can't we go to your house now? It's a lovely place, my house. I'm sure you would like it. There are whole rooms full of Turkish delight. And what's more, I have no children of my own. I want a nice boy whom I could bring up as a prince and who would be king of Narnia when I am gone. Truly? The prince would wear a gold crown and eat Turkish delight all day long. And you are much the cleverest and handsomest young man I have ever met. I think I would like to make you the prince someday when you bring the others to visit me. Why not now? Oh, but if I took you there now, I shouldn't see your brother and sisters. I very much want to know your charming relations. You are to be the prince, and later on, the king. That is understood. But you must have courtiers and nobles. I will make your brother a duke and your sisters duchesses. There's nothing special about them. And anyway, I could always bring them some other time. Ah, but once you were in my house, you might forget all about them. You'd be enjoying yourself so much that you wouldn't want the bother of going to fetch them. No, you must go back to your own country now and come to me another day. With them, you understand? It is no good coming without them. But I don't even know the way back to my own country. That's easy. Do you see that lamp? Straight on, beyond that, is the way to the world of men. And now, look the other way. And tell me if you can see two little hills rising above the trees. I think I can. Well, my house is between those two hills. So next time you come, you have only to find the lamppost and look for those two hills and walk through the wood till you reach my house. But remember, you must bring the others with you. <laughs> I, I might <laughs> have to be very angry with you if you came alone. <laughs> I'll do my best. Now, get out. Yes, Your Majesty. And by the way, you needn't tell them about me. It would be fun to keep it a secret between us two, wouldn't it? Make it a surprise for them. <laughs> Just bring them along to the two hills. A clever boy like you will easily think of some excuse for doing that. And when you come to my house, you could just say, let's see who lives here, or something like that. I'm sure that would be best. If your sister has met one of my fawns, she may have heard strange stories about me, nasty stories that might make her afraid to come to me. Fawns will say anything, you know, and now... Please, please, could I just have one last piece of Turkish delight to eat on my way home? No, no, you must wait until next time. Drive on. Thank you, Your Majesty. Next time. Next time. Don't forget. Come soon. That was the best Turkish delight I've ever had. Edmund! Edmund! Oh, so you got in too. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, don't go on about it. I see you were right, and it is a magical wardrobe after all. I'll say I'm sorry if you like. But where on earth have you been all this time? I've been looking for you everywhere. If I'd known you got in, I'd have waited for you. I've been having lunch with dear Mr Tumnus, the fawn. And he's very well, and the White Witch has done nothing to him for letting me go. So he thinks she can't have found out, and perhaps everything's going to be all right after all. The White Witch? Who is she? She's a perfectly terrible person. She calls herself the Queen of Narnia though she has no right to be queen at all. And all the fauns, and dryads and naiads, and dwarfs and animals, at least all the good ones, simply hate her. Oh? And she can turn people to stone, and do all kinds of horrible things. And she has made a magic spell, so that it is always winter in Narnia. Always winter, but it never gets to Christmas. Oh, and she drives around in a sleigh drawn by reindeer, with her wand in her hand, and she wears a crown on her head. Who told you all this stuff about the White Witch? Mr Tumnus, the fawn. Well, you can't always believe what fawns say. Who said so? Everyone knows it. Ask anybody you like. 
but it's pretty poor sport standing here in the snow. Let's go home. Yes, let's. Oh, Edmund, I am glad you got in too. The others will have to believe in Narnia now that we both have been here. What fun it will be. Hmm. Here's the wardrobe. I say, you do look awful, Edmund. Do you feel well? I'm all right. Come on, then. Let's find the others. What a lot we shall have to tell them. And what wonderful adventures we shall have, now that we're all in it together.